In this video, we are going to discuss about anemias. Anemia can mean a reduction of total RBC mass or decreased oxygen carrying capacity of blood or decreased hemoglobin, hematocrit or RBC concentration. RBC count, hemoglobin content and hematocrit are indicators of RBC mass. Normal RBC count in males is around 4.5 to 6 into 10 to the power 6 per microliter. For females, it is around 4 to 5 into 10 to the power 6 per microliter of blood. Normal hemoglobin content in males is around 14 to 17 gram per deciliter of blood. For females, it is 12 to 15 gram per deciliter. Normal hematocrit for males is around 45% and for females is around 40%. By hematocrit being 45%, we mean that in a total volume of blood of 100 ml, we have 45% RBC. And 55% plasma. Now let us look at the red cell indices. The first is mean cell volume or MCV. MCV denotes the average volume of a RBC in the units of femtoliter. Normal mean corpuscular volume is around 80 to 100 femtoliters. Since MCV is the volume of one RBC, we can get MCV by dividing PCV. That is the total volume of all the RBC divided by RBC count. That is number of RBCs. So we get the average volume. Now let's look at the Significance of MCV, also we see here a mnemonic. So according to MCV, anemia can be classified into microcytic anemia, normocytic anemia and macrocytic anemia. For normocytic anemia, that is normal cell size, MCV is normal value of 80 to 100 femtoliters. Now below 80 femtoliters, it is called microcytic anemia. Cells in this kind of anemia are smaller size cells. Now above 100 femtoliters, it is called macrocytic anemia. That means the cells or RBCs are larger sized RBC. Now we come to the mnemonic for the causes of these anemia. First, we come to microcytic anemia. The causes of it can be remembered by the word CETA. S for sideroblastic anemia, I for iron deficiency anemia, T for thalassemia, A for anemia of chronic disease. Then we come to the causes of normocytic anemia. The causes of normocytic anemia is as easy as a, B, C, D. A for acute blood loss, B for bone marrow failure, C for chronic disease, D for destruction or you can say hemolysis. Now we come to macrocytic anemia. You know no? macrocytic anemia, there is big, bigger RBC, larger size RBC. So you must remember this mnemonic that macrocytic anemia has left big fat RBC. Now from the first letters you know M for myxodema, H for hypothyroidism, L for liver dysfunction, B for B12 deficiency, F for folate deficiency and R for reticulocytosis. Then we come to mean cell hemoglobin or MCH. It 
denotes the average hemoglobin content per cell. Therefore, MCH is equal to total by total number that is total hemoglobin content by total RBC or RBC count which is around 27 to 33 picograms in a normal individual. Significance of MCH is that MCH in the normal range of 27 to 23 picograms is called normochromic while MCH below 27 picogram is called hypochromic. Then we come to mean cell hemoglobin concentration which denotes average hemoglobin in a given volume of packed RBC. MCHC can be derived by dividing MCH by MCD which we can say total mass of hemoglobin by total volume of the RBC. So in sort of it is mass by volume you know it is density. So we get the density of hemoglobin in the RBCs. Normal MCHC value is 33 to 37 gram per deciliters. Its significance is that it is increased in case of hereditary spherocytosis due to dehydration of the red blood cells. Then we come to the fourth red blood cell index which is red cell distribution width or RDW. It is the coefficient of variation of RBC size or we can say it is the degree of anisocytosis which is RBCs of various size. Remember RBCs of various shape is called poikilocytosis whereas anisocytosis is RBCs of various size. Now we come to normal RDW which is 11.5 to 14.5 percent which means that if we have two red cells the difference in their diameters may be around 11.5 to 14.5 percent. Significance of RBW is that it is increased in iron deficiency anemia. This is a very important feature for differentiating iron deficiency anemia from thalassemia. In thalassemia, there is no increase in RDW. Okay, now we come to the clinical features of anemia. Now we have symptoms and signs. Symptoms is what a patient complains about. But signs are what a doctor is concerned about, a doctor sees them. You can remember them as symptoms as a Y, which means you or patient. And signs as a I, I, I means I doctor. So the symptoms are shortness of breath, fatigue, dyspnea, dizziness. These all are serious disturbances. Then sleep disturbances which comes under CNS. Then comes amenorrhea and polymenorrhea which is a gynecological disturbance. Then comes anorexia, nausea which comes in the gastrointestinal tract. Now we see the signs. Major signs are pallor of skin and mucous membrane nail beds and palpebral conjunctiva. We can also see edema in ankle. There is tachycardia and a wide pulse pressure. In the cardiovascular system, we can see cardiac dilatation and latter signs of cardiac failure. You can remember the signs of anemia as S, E, a, T, S for pallor of skin, E for the eye that is the palpebral conjunctiva, A for ankle edema and T for tachycardia.
now we come to the classification of anemias. First, classification is based on mechanism, which is also called as etiological classification. So, on the basis of mechanism, anemia can be divided into blood loss anemia, hemolytic anemia, and hypoproliferative anemia. Blood loss anemia may be acute or chronic. Acute causes of blood loss may be a trauma due to accident, any surgical procedures. Chronic loss of blood may be due to GI lesions as in peptic ulcers or due to gynecological disturbance because of excessive loss of blood or due to urinary blood loss. Now coming to hemolytic anemia which is due to increased RBC destruction. There are two causes either because of intrinsic abnormalities or extrinsic abnormalities. Intrinsic abnormalities or intracorpicular abnormalities means that due to the defects in the cell itself, which may be hereditary or acquired. From the hereditary comes membrane abnormality, like in case of spherocytosis, elliptocytosis, or due to hemoglobin synthesis disorder as in thalassemia, sickle cell, or due to enzyme deficiency, due to glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, G6P dehydrogenase deficiency, or pyruvate kinase deficiency. Also, intrinsic abnormalities may be due to acquired abnormalities caused due to membrane defects as in PNH or paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Also now there are extrinsic abnormalities causing hemolytic anemia which occurs outside the cell. This may be antibody mediated as in autoimmune defense or in case of RH, uh, RH antigen disease of the newborn or in case of mechanical trauma when DIC or due to infection caused by malaria now we come to the morphological classification of anemia for this the main important criteria is the red cell index called MCV or the which is the average cell volume or the average volume of a RBC. So morphologically anemia can be divided into three types. First is normocytic normochromic, then macrocytic normochromic and microcytic hypochromic. Normocytic normochromic has normal levels of hemoglobin and a normal size. Macrocytic normochromic has a larger size but normal amount of hemoglobin. Microcytic means a smaller cell and hypochromic means low pigment that is low hemoglobin. So in the normocytic normochromic the MCV is normal, which is 80 to 100 femtoliters. MCH is also normal, which denotes the hemoglobin. Now we come to macrocytic normochromic. Since macrocytic means the larger cell, thus larger cell means larger volume, and larger volume means a larger MCV, which is greater than 100 femtoliters. Now we come to microcytic hypochromic. Microcytic micro means a smaller cell, thus a smaller volume. So it has MCV lower than normal levels, that is lower than 80 femtoliters. 
Now hypochromic means low pigment or low hemoglobin. Thus it has a lower MCH value that is less than 27 picograms which is the normal value. So now we come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching.